selling coke and dope ain't the business. Nope. Forget trapping and with all the business. Yep. True peace, Kins. It's May 25th, 2020. I'm back at y'all with another one. So if you're trying to stay ahead of the game, pick the same. Anti-government nonprofit wants to rebalance biometrics law in Utah. Now that's the headline for Peter Slam. A small libertarian nonprofit in Utah is pushing the state to curb government surveillance, biometric and otherwise. Liberters Institute sees threat in the state mounting as the government uses personal data in ways that individuals did not intend nor authorize, according to the proposal. The effort is a reaction to Utah government decisions that some find objectionable and more general to the proliferation of surveillance systems used by businesses and consumers. The Institute has proposed a two part campaign that it says will create more oversight for what information is collected on citizens and how it is used. The reform framework has been circulated among lawmakers, but no bill has been introduced yet. To start, states the document, a new office of citizens, privacy will be created and overseen by the state's auditor. The auditor will appoint both a state privacy officer and a personal privacy oversight committee. The office and committee will be formed by a statute at a later date. The institute led by its president, Connor Boyack, sees the privacy officer writing standards for related laws, technology use, and data security. The committee, among other tasks, will inform citizens and agencies about the topic and train government employees on best practices and civil liberty concerns. Boyack has been quoted saying people need the power to opt out of surveillance rather than serving as guinea pigs for government use of their data. The second step will be launching surveillance reform legislation to be voted on in the 2022 state legislative session. Okay, Lawmakers and bureaucrats rankled about the notion of rebalancing power when it comes to citizens' personal information might have no one to blame but themselves. An article in the Salt Lake Tribune recounts how state agencies, health providers, the University of Utah, and local police departments had signed secret, no-bid contracts with the surveillance company. The firm Banjo was given real-time access to 911 phone calls, security camera footage, and other data. All were forced to suspend the contracts when word of them leaked. And last year, July, the Washington Post reported that Utah had been sharing residents' driving license information with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Immigration and Custom Enforcement Agency for use in a facial recognition project. As with the Banjo incident, no authorization was sought and no residents were informed that their data was being shared for a secondary use. Selling coke and dope ain't the business. Nope. Forget trapping and with all the business. Yep. True peace, Kins. It's May 25th, 2020. I'm back at y'all with another one. So